Well, according to newly minted House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, some Democrats are losing their committee assignments. Those include Eric Swalwell, Adam Schiff, and Ilhan Omar being kicked off the Intelligence and Foreign Affairs Committee. This is something Republicans, uh, I think many said they would do. And here is uh, Representative Byron Donalds, who was one of the alternative candidates for Speaker, reacting on Joy Reid's show. Look, what we told Democrat leadership when they went down this, this pathway of removing members from committee is basically saying you should not do that because if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Let's be very clear. Ilan Omar has said things that are reprehensible. To, to, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. She has said terrible things about about the Jewish community, so much so that resolutions had to go to the House floor about them and they were watered down. Look, what we... So I, I think the... The, the one you can, first of all, the one you can fairly attribute to her saying that was not something she should have said was the Benjamins comment, uh, which she did apologize for. Um, in terms of Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell, uh, so I, 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 the Eric Swalwell thing, I guess there, there might be an actual legitimate security rationale. You know, he was kind of compromised by that uh, Chinese uh, person who was working for him. I think the Adam Schiff one sounds like just kind of political revenge to me. Uh, but in my view, it's actually a shame to lose Ilhan Omar, um, who has actually been critical of a lot of things Republicans are mad about right now. Um, here she is uh, reacting to the idea of this church committee to study, um, to study, so to cuts to the Pentagon and to what's been going on between collusion between the FBI and, and Twitter, et cetera, or, or mm -hmm. not even collusion, but, but pressure on Twitter to censor speech. Um, let's watch that. The obviously cuts to the Pentagon budget um, is pretty exciting for folks like me who have putting up amendments to do so. I also think um, the uh, church style um, uh, committee uh, that they are thinking about to look into if there has been any violations um, of First Amendment rights of, Amer of Americans uh, by the FBI and others um, also interests me. So we'll see uh, what ends up happening yeah. and if Republicans are able to actually be able to get anything done. Yeah. So that sounds to me like she's saying she wants to work with yeah. Republicans on some of their top priorities. Look, this is all about uh, vengeance and revenge. There are people both on the left and the right who are adamantly pro-Israel and pro-unlimited mm -hmm. funding to that country that have long uh, wanted to target and who have targeted progressives because of their advocacy for Palestinian rights. And that's what all of this has been about. Ilhan Omar's tweet, um, we should be specific about what she was accused of because I think kind of alluding to anti-Semitism is going to make people think that there was a mu much more there than w was there, frankly. She made a reference to uh, funding for Israel being all about the Benjamins, referencing a popular mm -hmm. hip-hop song and saying that it's all about the money. And that was characterized as, as uh, capitalizing on Jewish tropes, uh, anti-Semitic tropes, rather, about Jewish people having and controlling money. Uh, and this is something that people have gotten in trouble in with for a while. Uh, anytime, oftentimes when you raise issues about funding for Israel, there is this implication or, or, the, or these lobbying firms that have targeted, or lobbying packs uh, that have targeted progressives, the implication is that you're doing it because they're Jewish and not because they are, in fact, Israel-backed lobbying packs, super PACs that are attacking progressives. And it, there, there, there's a lot of mix up and confusion there. She has affirmed that she's not going to stop being critical of all of the, that money pouring out the door. But I think you're right. At the end of the day, she has demonstrated a willingness to be uh, aligned with conservatives on a lot of these military funding issues for in a way that is, frankly, in line with the tweet for which she got in trouble. But they're cutting off their nose to spite their face, perhaps also because both the Republican and the Democratic Party are both very beholden to those same mm -hmm. lobbying interests in that uh, relationship with Israel. Yeah, but that's not—I uh, agree with you. I mean, that's not what the base wants Yeah. Uh, and I, on either side. Um, they want— uh, they want questions answered about I mean they don't support foreign aid to anyone there's a bit the base yeah. doesn't you know wants an America first that's a, a, a bipartisan kind of po a position that you know how are we investing in our own community we have all this money for for Ukraine for other places that like the political figures are behind the times on all of that yeah um, and it's it's not a it's not a 
even a right, it's not a concern, it's not a Republican Democrat issue for, for certain. It's in a, a, you know, elites who think they know better, technocratic elites versus everybody else. Um, so I, I think it was, ju just as you said, um, very short-sighted to strip her of those committee assignments. Well, when she's saying things that, like, you could, you could run in a Republican primary yeah. saying exactly those things that she was saying. And in fact, I think we, uh, well, here's, here's a response for, from a leftist, Jim Zogby. He was an advisor uh, to the Jesse Jackson campaign back in the 80s. Uh, he tweeted, Speaker McCarthy's promise to remove Ilhan from the Foreign Affairs Committee is a continuation of the racist attacks targeting her since her election. GOP efforts to equate her with Marjorie Taylor Greene are shameful. Omar is a smart, thoughtful legislator. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is a provocateur and a buffoon. Um, James Zabi is a um, uh, Palestinian descent, has been a, a big advocate for those issues during uh, his time I mean, in politics mean, the, as well. what do you mean the attacks are racist? Against Ilhan Omar? Mm -hmm. Well, the idea that she is I mean, untrustworthy. Byron Donald is saying racist things about her? Well, I think probably Islamophobic is a, is a better word to use, but I think that the fact of her being characterized as untrustworthy to sit on a foreign affairs committee, having dual loyalty. I mean, that's something that is an anti-Semitic trope. It's I mean, a trope that's, that's been, but that's, it's something that's been applied that to kind of Asian Americans historically. And it's something that has been acute, that these Muslim members of Congress, both Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib have been accused of, that somehow they don't have the interests of Americans at heart because they're jihadists I mean, it, and, it and is, things like that. Jewish groups were saying, and I'm not saying I agree with this criticism, but what they were, one of the things they were criticizing her for or saying was anti Semitic was that they believed she was insinuating that Jewish people have dual loyalty or are more loyal to Israel than the United States. Well, I think so uh, a lot Israel pact, I think a pact, an APAC pact like DMFI, explicitly has as its goal advancing the interests of Israel. So, of course, it has. Israel's interest. I mean, like that's just you like tautological. Didn't you just say that was Islamophobic? No, I'm the saying other way? no, no, no. Jim Zogby is saying that criticism of Ilhan Omar are Islamophobic because the fact of her being Muslim is perceived as her not caring about the interests of America. Ilhan Omar isn't part of endorsing or funding some. Mm -hmm. Palestine super PAC. The interest of progressives is making sure that Israel doesn't run ramshot over the civil rights interests of people who are living in these disputed territories. Not that they are, uh, that there's a, some Palestinian front group that is very explicitly lobbying American politicians in the interest of Palestine. Those are two very different things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's worth noting to, to the that, that some of this seems to be very much about revenge against Ilhan Omar or these things that aren't related to her actually po her actual policy prescriptions. To your point, Robbie, I think we have another thought um, that has almost an express admission uh, of that uh, motive. You know, I made another promise to you last time. There was this congresswoman, Ilhan Omar. That's a rightful boo. I remember what she said about me. I remember what she said about Israel. Remember what she said about the relationship. I remember it so much. I promised you last year that as speaker, she no longer would be on foreign affairs. And I'm keeping that promise. Now. Well, move her off foreign affairs, but put her on the search committee <laughs> <laughs> at the very least. Well, yeah, and to think. be clear, the what they're talking about is this all about the Benjamins tweet um, and, and a criticism of America's financial entanglement with Israel that don't seem to be aligned with uh, our broader um, uh, goals in terms of uh, how communities are treated across the world and spreading democracy and a lot of things are really betrayed by the way uh, pal Palestinians are being treated in the region. And so it is very interesting that all of that is obscured by saying the thing Ilhan Omar said, the anti-Semitism. And it's a real shame because I think the substantive criticism there is real and frankly in line with a lot of Republicans are thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. Well, that does it for us today. Tomorrow on Rising, Reason Magazine's Liz Wolf will be back with us to give her take on how the IRS went after the very poorest taxpayers despite $80 billion in new funding. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And be sure to catch us on Roku and other streaming services as well if that's more your style. See All you right. tomorrow. Bye-bye.